AI is going to allow us to uh, pursue this awesome quest for super knowledge and we're going to be able to see unseen realities. But there's a trade-off, they say. And the trade-off is that in order to unlock AI's full potential, we have to essentially sell off our ability to perceive reality. And we have to use AI as we're using, you know, as not just as we're using it, using it now, but deepen that involvement to the point where we're essentially uh, dependent on AI to make decisions for us. And we become cognitively diminished by AI, meaning that, um, you know, we aren't using our brains like we did before to make decisions and reason and perceive reality. And so AI, the machine, is doing all of that for us. That's sort of what they envision. And that's very dystopian. AI promises an unprecedented quest for super knowledge offering us a lens to perceive unseen realities. Yet it demands a hefty price, our cognitive independence. The deeper integration of AI in our lives could lead to a diminished ability to make decisions, reason, and perceive reality on our own. This prospect, as Webb suggests, borders on dystopian, where our reliance on AI could stifle our cognitive functions, making machines the primary decision makers. As we navigate through this AI-driven landscape, it's crucial to balance the benefits of technological advancements with the preservation of our innate human capabilities. The conversation around AI is not just about technological evolution, but also about maintaining the essence of what makes us human. If you find today's video insightful, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and ring that notification bell to stay updated on the latest in the crypto and tech world. But then you read on and they start essentially talking about this two tier society model. So basically they're like, well, this AI quote unquote revolution will be very empowering for some people. You know, the policymakers, uh, the heads of multinational corporations, the people who design AI and, and code it and task it and regulate it, they'll find this very empowering. But then the people who, you know, consume AI from, you know, the consumer level um, or are just sort of, you know, not part of that other tier, everyone else really, uh, will be bewildered by its opaque decision making and, uh, you know, will be disempowered or find it disconcerting and won't really have any control over their lives anymore. And then over time, will cease to be able to realize what's happening to them. And uh, I mean, that's that's literally what the book is about. It's oh. very nuts and talks about, you know, AI is basically going to draw people, mainly this disempowered class, into a new version of reality that, that is essentially being designed by the empowered class right the technocrats i guess you could call them it's very like matrix-esque um and very creepy and a lot of it also has to do with what they say is going to be ai control over the information space and of course that's going to really come into its own once both ai and the internet are heavily regulated by a centralized authority which is what the un is gearing up to do next year what do you know what are they gearing up to like set the set the rules for all right here's how you interact with it because yes for ai for everyone globally a new un agency and it's backed by all the big ai companies like sam altman's yeah. open ai it's, among others it's completely um, disgusting one centralized authority to control all ai and um you know the goal is to have this ai uh not just censor information like it's doing now on social media, for example, uh, they want it to basically write all of the all of the information. So basically, people will be, you know, on the new internet. You know, they'll be consuming information, but it'll all be written by AI. Essentially, that's yeah. like essentially what they want to do as they map it out. Have it like um, basically shape people's minds and make people uh, control how people receive reality by dominating the information space and all the information people have access to and like everything they see and do, hence the whole like push into augmented reality, Neuralink. I mean, that's like the final phase, I guess, of all of this. But, um, you know, it's to basically deepen our dependence on this stuff and have the algorithm continue to choose for us to a, a point where we don't even know how to choose for ourselves anymore. Anytime the, the 
private, super powerful corporate world goes like, regulate me harder, daddy, in front of Congress, you know, there is fuckery afoot, for sure. I mean, basically what you have to keep in mind here, and a lot of people forget this too, Silicon Valley, pretty much all of those main companies uh, were made by like intelligence services or the military or with funding from one or two, or if they weren't initially, are now contracted tractors and all intertwined with the national security state. So, okay. Um, I mean, that's why we have these things like people now getting upset about Facebook censoring stuff, but Facebook, you know, was essentially tied up with DARPA and, you know, the CIA through Peter Thiel uh, from, from the very beginning. Right. So is it really that surprising that they would censor on behalf of the state? No, they're an independent private company. No, that's like a total, uh, that's a lie. Like the whole thing about Silicon Valley being all these like humble entrepreneurs tinkering around in their garage and look at what we've made with the American entrepreneurial spirit. I mean, that's such bullshit. Like if you look into any of these big companies, uh, you always had, you know, these powerful entities of the state there. And so they're extensions of state power. Even if you want to think that they weren't necessarily at the origins, you can't deny that now. I mean, they fused, essentially. Webb introduces the concept of a two-tier society emergent from the AI revolution. This division places policymakers, heads of multinational corporations, and AI designers in a position of empowerment, while the average consumer faces bewilderment and disempowerment by AI's opaque decision-making. This stark division not only underscores the potential for increased social inequality, but also raises significant ethical concerns about the control and access to AI technologies. The idea of a centralized authority, as proposed for regulation by entities like the UN, supported by major AI companies, presents a future where AI could potentially dictate the flow and authenticity of information. This centralized control over AI and the information space could profoundly affect our perception of reality, steering us towards a reality crafted by the technocratic elite. In light of these revelations, it becomes imperative to question the trajectory of AI governance and its implications on freedom, privacy, and democracy. Really, I think what's going on now in terms of the battles of AI, well, I mean, sure, there's this open source component, but there also is this competition over like which uh, elite faction you know, essentially, you know, there's this blob in the U.S. and there's also like a, a BRICS blob, I guess, you know, like in China, for example, of their tech companies, you know, who's going to get their AI adopted by uh, emerging markets in the global south. And that's where a lot of the focus is, is to do all this stuff, you know, in Latin America, Africa, um, Southeast Asia. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know, definitely something to... Uh, to look at there in terms of the dynamics, because they talk pretty openly about it. But the justification that, you know, these groups uh, like Schmidt's group give for, um, you know, winning that factional battle is uh, in order to beat China, we have to become China and we have to compete with China's, uh, what they call the China's civil military fusion model, which is, you know, um, civilian sector, the private sector and the military are fused in China. They're working together towards this goal. So, you know, the U.S. has to follow, uh, develop a model equivalent to that, which is, um, that is fascism. That is straight up fascism, guys. Um, and that is what Eric Schmidt, who is basically uh, one of the people puppeteering the Biden administration, because obviously Joe Biden is not in charge of shit. Um, you know, is that's what he wants to do. The AI czar is actually Eric Schmidt. They just won't tell you because he's funding all their experts and like developing all the policies with like his people. It's like he's like single handedly funding most of the Federation of American Scientists and stuff. I mean, it's just unreal. Uh, but then at the same time, you know, you have the Schmidt crowd and then you have the Peter Thiel crowd, right? And the Peter Thiel crowd is very involved in the development of this um, AI weapon and AI surveillance technology. They've been testing a lot of it out in Ukraine and are going to be testing it out in the Middle East now for sure. Webb touches on the global competition among elite factions to dominate AI technology, highlighting the strategic importance of AI adoption in emerging markets. This geopolitical race not only underscores the influence of AI on global power dynamics, but also the underlying motives of elite factions to model societies after authoritarian principles under the guise of technological advancement. The mention of a civil military fusion model, as seen in China, 
and the push for a similar approach in the U.S., opens a dialogue on the merging of civilian and military interests in the development and deployment of AI technologies. This convergence raises profound concerns about the erosion of democratic principles and the onset of a technocratic form of governance, where the line between state and corporate power blurs. As we reflect on Webb's insights, it's clear that the battle for AI supremacy extends beyond technological innovation to encompass fundamental questions about the kind of society we want to build. The choices we make today regarding AI governance, ethical standards, and global cooperation will shape the future of humanity in the decades to come. Thank you for joining us on Unscripted Crypto. For more content on the intersection of technology and society, make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video.